that? I mean, do you think that they're that strong, kind of set the tone in team periods? Well, we've been playing pretty well. You know, we're playing fast. Uh, we're through the install now, so uh, we can start working a little harder on uh, different looks and and uh, playing a little faster. But we've uh, yeah, we've had a good two days. And with so much of the emphasis, I mean, just in spring, it was just play physical, play physical, right. play the run game. Is that carried over? And you know, could you see those guys kind of take, taking that upon themselves in the summer? Yeah, we're playing physical. They had a good summer. You know, Mac does a great job with them, and uh, they had a good summer. And yeah, we're playing pretty physical. I mean, I, I don't know what to say because you know I don't want to pump them up too much. But yeah, we've had a good two two days. And do you, is it natural to assume with so many guys back that have played before that they would you know kind of get off to a quick start? Well, you can assume that, but <laughs> they got to do it. You know, I mean, you can assume you've got a whole a whole boatload of great players, but they got to go play. And so, uh, what we're doing right now, we're responding to what we're at. They're responding to what we're asking them to do, and they're responding really well. And uh, we're excited about the group. And really, you know, the only two changes were, you know, sliding Dallas inside and moving Antonio in, I guess, from, from last year, really. I know James had played some before, but just Antonio at left tackle and Dallas at guard, how's that side work? Actually, pretty good. You got two talented guys over there. They need to communicate a little better at times. Uh, both of them are pretty quiet guys, uh, except when Tiny gets in front of the media, you know. But uh, <laughs> other than that, uh, uh, they've done a nice job. Uh, they're both really good players, and so uh, we'll see how they play together. But they had a whole spring to play together, and now the fall, so they've been looking fine. And I know you can't pump him up too much without him having to play, but Antonio's a guy that we've all been waiting to see since he got, you know, he was in high school and did stay here. Does he, you know, look like he's ready to just step in there and, and you know, be a, a quality SEC left tackle? He'll be ready. He'll be ready. Uh, we've got a lot of players that are pretty good players. You know, Zach Fulton's a, a good player. James Stone is a good football player. Obviously, Jawan James and Tiny gets a lot of the pub because he's so highly recruited and so talented, you know, athletically. But we've got a lot of good players out there. And speaking of an note, what about Jawan? A guy that started every game since he's been here. I mean, he's all, he's a guy you can take for granted. He's you know just kind of just seems to be a rock. He's playing more physical. You know, that's the thing about it. You get an athletic guy. Uh, obviously, that's wonderful. But unless he uses that athleticism, being physical, he's not a very good offensive lineman, and that's what he's doing now. He's playing a lot more physical. And just overall depth, and it seems, you know, last year that was a struggle, though you were part of that. But, I mean, yeah. it seems just like they've got more bodies, more big bodies, more guys who, you know, you can maybe stick in there. Is that, is that accurate? Yeah, that's accurate. I mean, uh, you know, Bullard's helping us out, you know, at, at some several spots right now. Marcus James is playing. Uh, well in there. Uh, Crowder's doing a good job. Kirby's coming, getting better every day. So, yeah, we Darren Gooch had a good spring, so uh, or a good fall camp so far. So, yeah, we think we get we're getting a little bit more towards that number of ten. When you take a look at, at just this line, and you mentioned the good work that was done in the spring, so I guess you're pretty pleased with the retention from spring to now. Yeah, I really am. You know, the the, the thing about every camp is you fire a bunch of stuff at them early. And the retention was pretty good, you know, and uh, and of course uh, the defense has a lot of things in too. So uh, you know, with all the the, the, the looks that we're seeing uh, uh, that we're seeing and all the things of that nature, I think we've done a pretty good job of, of uh, figuring things out. When you consider that Tennessee is throwing a bunch of different stuff out there defensively, how has the line reacted to looking at just uh, various schemes? Well, it's good for us. It makes us keep our play with our head up. It makes us make our calls. Uh, it makes us understand nose going across and face. It makes us understand a lot of different things. So it's been really good for us. And of course, they play a lot of base too. But uh, you know, every team's got their own blitz package, and so we certainly do too. I guess you guys would have a pretty good front row seat to see how guys like Daniel McCullers and some of the newcomers are doing. How, how would you rate the play of the defensive line going against the offensive line uh, so far? They, they played really well. Uh, they play hard. Uh, Danny's a load now. I mean, he's, uh, 
we were laughing yesterday. We had a one-on-one -on -one drill, and Matt Crowder was over over the top of him. It looked like, you know, a little kid versus a big old man. And uh, Max 285, so he's a big cat, and he's got good hands, good athleticism. And as you search for that that 10 that you were talking about, how much does having, a, I guess, a better level of competition? just in, in between the first and second lines. How much does that help the starters to know that they might be getting pushed a little bit? I think it's, you know, competition obviously makes the starting guys not just, you know, kind of go into a, a cruise mode, you know. Hopefully we're coaching hard enough to where they wouldn't do that anyway, but consciously they know if they don't get it on, somebody else will. You get 106 starts returning, but those starts were under a previous coach in the previous system. How much impact is that? Well, experience, you know, is a big deal, especially up front. Here's when it's good, though. I mean, if you can lock guys into one spot, then it's good. If you've got 106 starts and, it, and 20 of them were at right tackle and one was at left tackle and this, that, and other, you got to play by the guy if you're going to. you got to play by somebody for a period of time before you understand it. And so... Uh, obviously, it's great that we have that kind of uh, uh, depth and that kind of returning starters and guys that have been in games, but we got to lock them into one spot. And a lot of that depth, a lot of those starts came with somebody else getting hurt, and I've moved a right tackle or left guard, and you understand what I'm saying. Exactly. So uh, we've got to find the five and place them where they want to be, where they need to be, and then let's get rolling. James, perfect example of that back at center now. Yeah, James is at center, and he's doing a great job. And Somebody, you're going to ask me which hand he's snapping with, and he's snapping with the hand that he can get it to the quarterback in the shotgun, and he's snapping with the one he can get it to the quarterback under center. That's what he's doing. <laughs> Coach, have you ever encountered that before? You know, a guy that you know, was left-handed and you wanted to change him? or you know, Is that a common deal? It's not common to change a guy. Uh, let me rephrase that. If you're going to shotgun snap, you're going to snap with the hand you can shotgun snap, period. And then the rest of it, if the quarterback wants it right-handed from underneath, you're going to give it to him that way. But if you're shotgun snapper, you're going to snap with the one you can get the quarterback the ball. You look at the makeup of the line, and, and you've got a veteran, of course, in Dallas, and then you got some guys who have really received high regard from their teammates as being leaders in, in Zach and Juwan. How much does that help the younger guys fall in line, know what's expected, and, and just kind of process everything? If you're a good leader and you're a good player, you can do almost anything. Uh, if you're a good leader and, and you're not a very good player, then you can still lead, but the guys don't look at you the same. Now, you just said three guys that can flat play, so their leadership skills have been really good this, this fall. Thank you. Can you just